So my name is Jeremy Tan. I am uh, with the My Superhero Friends Foundation. So I'm very thankful na uh, pinaunlakan tayo ng ating mga guest speakers. And yung ating webinar ngayon is Making Millions from Agar Wood. So millions, what can your money do for you? What can your money do for other people? And we're glad na binibigyan tayo ng insights ni Doc M at saka ni Sir Basil from their expertise. So, ano ba ang objectives ng ating webinar ngayon? So, share best practices in agarwood production. Siyempre. So, di ba sabi nga kanina ni Ma'am Edith, um, hindi daw kalakihan yung lupa niya, pero gusto niyang matutunan. So, that's one of the topics. Improve Philippine biodiversity. Um... I'm trying to recall, isa siyang speaker from, uh, I think it's NGCP, basta sa energy, uh, na sinasabi niya, isa sa mga hotspots, biodiversity hotspots, ang Pilipinas. So, we want to fix that problem. Kasi, alam nyo naman, maraming mga yamang, uh, kalika, uh, tawag nito, likas na yaman ng Pinas na baka hindi natin na ma-maximize or na-abuso, this is one way that we can help resolve that issue. And establish facts and abolish misconceptions in agarwood production. So sabi nga kanina ni, ni uh, Sir Basil, baka iba yung pagkaka-interpret natin ng mga information na nakikita natin sa social media, sa internet. So bibigyan natin yan ng paglilinaw uh, through our speakers. And of course, empower you, the agarwood farmers, developers, and suppliers through the correct information. So this will be a knowledge-filled webinar today. Now, I would just like to take this time to introduce who we are. Uh, we are the My Superhero Friends Foundation. We were founded in uh, 2008, and we go by the motto, Helping Hand with a Heart. As uh, nasabi na ni Superhero Mike kanina na we are guided by our five pillars. So, super self-health warriors uh, para sa mga ano, para sa ating uh, personal well-being. And trip hero, of course, magturo tayo kagaya ng tuturo ni Sir uh, ni Sir Basil at ni Doc M about um, maximizing agarwood pag nenegosyo din. And super escolar. So, we help uh, students go through college or high school. Meron din tayong environmental defender which is aligned sa ating uh, biodiversity advocacy kasama na yung webinar natin ngayon. And of course, animal protector. Uh, nasabi na din ni Sir Mike na we have a special focus right now on promoting the planting of Philippine native trees. So our speakers, unahin ko si... Doc M. Sarkado, so nakita nyo kanina, he was already featured by GMA uh, two, three years ago. So sino po ba si Doc M? He is a value chain expert, ADB. So kung kilala nyo yung ADB, alam nyo na malawak ang scope nila. And consultant sa DBP Seed Bank Project, so may mga ganun pala yung ating government. And may sinulat din si Doc M na manual on nursery and output uh, outplanting of beach forest. So baka may ano kayo, may special interest kayo sa ganitong topic, you can reach out to Doc uh, M. Sarkado. Meron siyang sinulat na libro, Philippine Native Trees 202. Um, if I'm not mistaken, mayroon pong online shop. And since Dr. C. Doc M, he leads a group of dentrotonics na... Uh, uh, environmental Services, VP din siya ng Sustainable Tree Farmers Group of the Philippines. And then he also uh, admin, uh, tawag nito, leads the Germination Protocol Development and Administrator ng Philippine Native Tree Enthusiasts. So kung first time yung, may, siguro may iba dito na first time marinig yung PNTE, mas malalaman natin yan maya maya. And of course, his special topic today, agarwood plantation and trading. Now, we have Sir Basil. So, sino ba si Mr. Castaño? He is the uh, CEO of Telcontar Forest and Farms, ABC Farms, Ops Manager ng Lawaan sa Kalayaan Agroforestry Program. So, malawak po ang kaalaman ni Sir Basil about the topic. 
And then, meron siyang Agarwood Plantation na SEC accredited. So, importante po na recognize ng government. Kaya nga sabi ni Sir Basil kanina na uh, dapat alam natin. At saka, we should talk to the right people. And of course, PNP administrator and na involved din po siya sa ating Congress and Senate as a staff uh, back in this back in his day. So uh, that's that's our profile for our speakers. And let me turn you over to our first speaker, si Doc M. Sercado. Take it away, Doc. Uh, I think it will be Basil first, Basil. Here we go. Uh, can you can you see my you know, screen? Yes, sir. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, uh, we go here. Okay, our objectives are going to be uh, number one: we share best practices in agrobot production. Uh, we also have to improve biodiversity by having a plantations, and we hope to trash out yung mga misconception, fake news, and uh, in agarwood production. Uh, we also want to empower agarwood plantation owners, developers through correct information and also association. Okay. Uh, nasabi na regarding si Dr. Zorcado kanina. Uh, Okay, my my talk will be focusing on two things. Uh, it's going to be using uh, incorporating Philippine native trees in you know, for, for your future plantations, and also the legalities that uh, now we need to do to be legal and sustainable. Okay, because uh, I also always believe in the in the saying that you do it right the first time because if you do it wrong the first time it's going to be very expensive for you so it it doesn't matter if it's agriculture forestry management that that happens okay uh more quick uh quick uh talk about me uh i'll just update uh, what uh jeremy said uh, i'm a fourth generation farmer uh, I focus in conservation by propagation of Philippine native trees and plants. I'm an administrator of PNTE. Uh, I also sit in the EDOC Policy and Collaborations Committee of PNTE. We're 16,000 members around the world right now. Uh, I also do facilitation of various PNTE reforestation initiatives. I am one of the Filipino partners of the a foreign-based agrobot company those active in Europe, Middle East, and Southeast Asia. Uh, I'm a social entrepreneur based on agroforestry. Thank you. Okay, so why native trees? Okay, uh, dependent on the land that you have, uh, it may be a flat land, rolling, uh, mountainous, if you have uh, such properties, you can use native, native trees for, for your anti-erosion reforestation, uh, pioneer you use pioneer species for reforestation. You also use them for food production, agricultural crops, agroforestry, and also cash crop. For example, if you are, if you're having, if you're starting your plantation, uh, hindi naman kaagad lalaki yung agarwood. Hindi naman siya kaagad. Next year, pwede mong ma-harvest eh. Kailangan mo muna ng kita kasi papakainin mo mo pa yung tao mo, sarili mo, pamilya mo. So, since may lupa ka na, uh, you have to use the areas in their cropping to, to have yields right now. Kasi hindi ka na makakahintay ng anim or apat na taon bago kum kumita kasi baka gutom ka na. Lalayas ka ng mga tao mo. Tapos, uh, native trees also produce good timber. Uh, especially, uh, number one, mahogany versus nara. Grain quality, size, strength, nara. Just, just, that's just one example. We have 3,500 native trees in the Philippines at least. As of the last count in the 90s, 
Okay. You can also use them for landscaping and ornamentals. Uh, kung nare, we 100 hectares ka, tapos 80 hectares yung yung gagawin mo for yung gagamit for plantation. Yung 20 don, pwede mong gawing agriculture, uh, arboretum, park mo, retirement home for your family, small resort. So native trees provide the best uh, provide provide the best landscape materials that's are that are readily available. Hindi ko na pinapakita dito kasi aabotan tayo ng isang linggo to to show you the the, the native trees. Okay. Uh, why native trees? Uh, ngayon kasi nauso nung 30 years ago, 20 years ago, even 5 years ago nauso yung uh, magtanim tayo ng mahogany kasi mas mabilis yan or javelina or falcata. Uh, real world experience, kaya namang sumabay. And mapilis din naman yung mga malave, bani, uh, white lawan, white nato. It, they also give the best drops versus erosion, watershed protection, and freshwater ecosystem. You need to have this because if you want your plantation to be to be a good ecosystem or to, to have a good ecosystem, you have to put native trees there because it will take care of itself. You don't need much soil am amendments. Hindi masyado sa fertilizers. Hindi ka mag import ng tubig pag, pag tag init pag may El Nino, so kailangan yun ng native trees. Uh, number number three dito, it will con it will improve continuity of the local natural landscape. Mabilis din sila, a natural habitat of wildlife. Uh, doon tumitira yung mga ibon, pupunta sila sa, sa native trees. Magandang magkaroon ng ibon sa umaga sa inyong plantation, di ba? And one of the most important things that's been happening right now, uh, native trees can also create natural barriers for biological, you know, uh, biological and geological problems. For example, uh, yung mga native trees, they can survive uh, the ash fall ng Mount Taal, uh, Taal volcano eruptions la last year. Uh, proven na uh, buhay na buhay yung mga mabolo, Mga nara, uh, aside from the uh, com as compared to the others, uh, they can also if you have a konare your plantation is beside the highway. Daming taong dumadaan. You can put barriers there like trees, especially trees, so that hindi siya ano hindi siya madaling mapuntahan na virus. Di ba sabi nga okay lang ko main basta outdoors. What more kung may barriers ka like trees? Magandang ano retirement or ano sanctuary yon for you. Okay, next slide. Uh, no. Mabilis din sila maging canopy builders for Achillaria species. Certain Achillaria species kasi, I, th I, do, uh, I think it may, they may be discussed later. Certain Achillaria species need to be, need to have uh, canopies before they can grow. Mabilis ng ano, mabilis ang, ang, ang ating mga native trees to provide shade for them. Okay, let's do a quick uh, tour dun sa common legalities on your plantation. Uh, you need to, at the onset kasi, you have to do it right para hindi ka na masita ngayon. Hindi ka masisita bukas, hindi ka masisita later on when you're, you're going to to harvest your your tree or you have a distillery or depende kasi akilari, ang dami pwedeng gawin, pwedeng tsa doon. Eh. So, yun nga, the best for you is to have at the start, legal, uh, you, you did your own legal documents, permits, and everything para ano, para hindi kasisitahin. This is ano, outside of the DTI or SEC or your own private registration. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is aside from that. Uh, for example, uh, we're going to this private lands lang. Uh, uh, meron kasing instrument yung DNR na you can you can borrow public lands from them up to 50 or 10,000 hectares. Pero uh, those are outdated already. Minsan may, may binibigay pa rin yata na 
na lease ang government to for public lands for private individuals but I, it's very uncommon right now so let's focus on private lands which i assume everybody is uh, is is uh, is enjoying or is planning to enjoy the definition of private lands by the dnr is number one titled lands uh, administrative or juridical dnr dao 1988 number 86 pwedeng ano yan cloa dar ang nagbigay or some other title na binigay uh, it has to it also has to be tax declared na alienable alienable and disposable lands na may patent siya yun ang private land and finally it's also covered by the dar na cloa those are the definition of private lands okay uh, ang pinakasikat right now is the ctpo it's the certificate of tree plantation ownership by the dnr uh why do we need to there's another dao that has been uh, signed few months ago i will will discuss that later but right now kasi merong ano merong uh, what do you call this may confusion kung itutuloy ba yung ctpo or dao na lang but right now i suggest you i suggest right now na hindi pa naman hindi pa talaga na establish yung new dao kasi it will take them one year to do it. Uh, I suggest if you're going to this year or this planting season, this rainy season, you apply for certificate of tree plantation ownership. Usually, you get it from the sendro nearest to you or yung nakasakop sa lugar ninyo. Uh, it will make tree plantation registration uh, easy for you to harvest and transport or of the timber is easier. Timber or products. It's like the birth certificate of your trees. Yun ang CTPO. Maraming example online. And again, uh, with I'm trying to avoid showing examples, it will take us, uh, no, it will eat the time allotted given to us. Uh, because CTPO, you have to get CTPO because it's easy to secure documents, clearances to harvest and transport timber products from your plantation. Minsan nga, tricycle sa highway, hinaharang kasi may uling. Walang maipekit ang CTPO. Siyempre, hindi naman niya naisip mag-CTPO. Pero pag may CTPO yon hindi ka naharasin usually ng mga tao. And then, may exemption ka from any forest charges and other environmental fees. And kung may CTPO ka, iwas ka sa red tape. Iwas ka din sa mga suggestions na na yung naririnig ko na kailangan mo pang gumuha ng ibang permits and everything ibang iba na namang ano fees uh, if you have CTPO you're also exposing yourself as a legitimate person legitimate plantation owner so i-register ka rin sa DNR uh, sa database nila and uh, you can also, you can claim that you're recognized by the DNR which is true and you're legitimate plantation owner so CTPO is a frontline service of DNR. You get it from the CENRO, the, S the Community Environment and Natural Resources Officer. Uh, sometimes there's only one in one province, but generally, maraming CENRO sa probinsya. It depends on the scope of the area. You use CENRO if your plantation is less than 10,000 hectares. There are other instruments like IFMA or SIFMA if it's going to be more than uh, 10,000 hectares. Ito kas, uh, you have to you have to do CTPO with any tree planted. Uh, minsan, sinasabi daw nila ng mga staff ng DNR na pag, pag native trees daw, hindi nila binibigyan ng CTPO kasi hindi daw kailangan. Uh, but when you read the department order of the CTPO, it doesn't delineate kung na kailangan exotic or mahogany or nara or native. Any tree planted can get CTPO. So you have to insist that. It depends din kasi minsan uh, on the CTPO. Then again, uh, magtatanong sila, depende to ha, on the culture of the area. Uh, depende sa mga tanong nila. So you just have to satisfy them and check that all their questions are under the CTPO DAO. This is the usual requirements. Kailangan mo ng letter of request, kailangan mo ng tax deck or title or etc. 
and kailangan mo may geotag pictures na tinanim mo sila. CTPO can only be applied when you already planted the trees, not before. Hindi mo kailangan magpaalam, magtanim sa sarili mong lupa. Or sarili mong lupang hiniram, uh, kung hiniram mo yung lupa, the title or the tax deck, uh, the owner should give you a, uh, a paper specific specifying that pinahiram niya yung lupa para magtanim ka. And other, depends sa area, minsan nagre-require sila ng barangay certification na nagtanim ka nga at ikaw yung nagtanim ng lupang yon. Yun ang usual requirements. Uh, dahil pandemic, uh, for example, in Isabela, uh, right now they are accepting ano, uh, internet email, ano, email uh, applications for CTPO. In Batangas, uh, we did this uh, few months ago, noong medyo GCQ pa, hindi ko na alam ngayon, uh, pwedeng, ano, uh, you have to go to the office. Depends on the centro. There are many centros in Batangas. Okay, this is the one overlapping DAO order aside from the CTPO. Uh, this was signed December uh, last year. It's DAO 2020-18. Uh, it's, it's called uh, promoting tree plantation development for forest so it's 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 long so this concerns uh, no this concerns both public and private lands but we're focusing on public lands the private uh, on private lands the public lands kasi uh, yan yung may, may instrument ng if and sif ma this pa private lands plantation sabi niya from ctpo hindi mo na kailangan ng ctpo kailangan mo na lang ng private tree plantation registration at wala na daw wala na daw uh, fees na i-collect. Yun ang yun ang order ni Secretary Simato last December. <clears throat> Hindi mo na rin kailangan ng tree cutting permit and self-monitoring form that you usually do this under the old uh, process. Uh, you 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 do tree cutting permit from harvesting and transporting harvested logs. Now, you just need third party certification needed. Uh, uh, this is the caveat. Yung third-party certification needed is only for foresters na na-train and na-certify ng DANR Forest and Manage Forest Management Bureau. So, uh, kung wala pa, kung, wala, kung ngayon ka mag-apply, kung wala pang na-train sa kanila, pwedeng yung mga permanent DNR foresters under DNR, eh, tama, DNR foresters, ang pwede mag-certify as a third-party certification in your tree plantation registration. This is until December 2021, this year. Ang kavit kasi dun sa DAO is this, tree, this private tree plantation registration will get in effect within a year. So after pagdating ng January next year, uh, it will be assumed that this DAO 2020-18 will be already be in, be in effect. So, dapat meron ng third-party certification and by January, kung sinasabi nila, if this is going to be followed, it's assumed na kailangan mo na ng tree plantation, uh, private tree plantation registration. Uh, it's more simple, it's generally simpler than CTPO. Yun ang claims nito. But then again, we'll see because it's still in the infant stage. You don't, uh, under the DAO 2020-18, there no certification needed is no certification is needed if the products are to be used inside the loader's property so kung timber yan kung gagamitin mo lang sa loob hindi mo ilalabas hindi mo na kailangan ng 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 certification then again uh, it depends on what you want minsan o would uh, agar wood chips yung product mo ilalabas mo yon so you need certification if you need oil uh, if you have, you have your own distillery in Agarwood, hindi mo naman ilalabas yung chips, oil lang siya. Pero you have to tell the, the DNR that uh, you're producing oil. Siyempre, meron naman sa permit mo yan sa DTI or sa SEC. At least na-recognize ka ng government doon. Uh, for example, if you're producing leaves, tea, tea development for Agarwood, hindi naman timber yon. You don't need certification there. But you need other certifications like DTI or from DA. It depends on, it really depends on Agarwood because uh, on the Aquilaria because there are a lot of products that you can derive from Aquilaria species, not just the Agarwood 
uh, seeds nga pwede mong ibenta eh yun na yung you know that that's the e seeds or seedlings that's that's one of the products you can do okay the other related materials uh, other related laws that you have to ex you have to research if you're very interested in and in agro plantations uh, i'll just pass them through i'll just read them uh, they are very uh, it's very easy to discuss to 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 read pero mahaba kasi these are the wildlife act uh, why wildlife act sometimes you have wildlife collect you need to satisfy a wildlife collector's permit uh, maraming Maraming pupunta sa private land, sa mga bundok uh, na ang pag-aari gobyerno, nangongolekta ng seeds or ng agar. Kailang, technically, kailangan mo ng wildlife collector's permit doon. Kasi kung hindi, poacher ang tawag sa iyo. Number two, CITES. Uh, it's an inter, international convention on trade of exotic. You need the CITES permit if you're going to import or you export your agar wood. Ano. It's like a it's a it's a international convention under UN, and that that's are that those are the two materials that you need to to read upon later on. Okay, uh, so summary, uh, native trees. It's your best protection uh, for intercropping or other, uh, not just intercropping, soil erosion, biodiversity, canopy for your plantations. And the legalities, it's CTPO, DAO 2020-18, Wildlife Act, and CITES. CITES, 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 it depends on your country. Okay, uh, last notes before I turn over to Dr. Sarkado. You always, you should always strive for complete paperwork. Kung mabutasan ka in any business, eh, magkakaproblema ka. Not just from DNR, also BIR, D DTI, SEC, yung reporting. And you study inv investments na nakikita nyo online. Uh, maraming nagkasabi na nagbebenta sila ng, ng lupa or title or stock certificate for a, for a nagar plantation. Pero wala namang maipakita ang registration or plantation itself. Uh, medyo pag-isipan nyo muna yun kasi sayang yung pinaghirapan nyo na pera. Number two and uh, number three, you... You should join reputable organizations for not just ano, not just an agarwood plantation organizations. Uh, I suggest you already go into the uh, the bigger groups, the tree timber or tree farmers mismo, uh, the sustainable tree farmers group where ano where Dr. Sarkado is the vice president. Uh, it's government registered. Uh, they they have FCC certifications, internationally known. They ano. Uh, they will this organization help you networking or not just not networking just taking taking care give you tips on ano, or plantations it can be your it can be a nato nyato lawaan meranti agarwood plantation they will help you you read materials online marami nagki-claim na certain species lang daw ang pwedeng ano ang legal or pwedeng magbigay ng ng agarwood da, da, sabi nga nila isa lang ang isang species lang ang pwedeng uh, pakuha na ng agarwood oil hindi totoo yon ah, marami pong agarwood species it really depends on your area it depends on your on the mountain the bagyo the weather the elevation you have to read materials online para hindi kayo maloko Tapos, ang pinaka-importante, magtanong lang po kayo. Uh, it will take siguro a few days, pero kung nagtanong kayo, at lalo na kung nag-member kayo sa Sustainable Tree Farmers Group of the Philippines Incorporated, masagot nila kayo. <laughs> uh, yun lang po. Thank you. Uh, we're, ano, we're still fixing the Facebook, but uh, I am facebook.com uh, slash agarwoodph and you can email me agarwoodphl at gmail.com. Uh, thank you very much.